So we, we are doing something quite crazy today. Uh, we want to do a life surgery uh, in Frankfurt, which one uh, will be there will be everything inside what's normally now on the market, whatever you can do around one patient. And what we want to do, um, it's a very, very difficult case we want to do. And these cases are so difficult that it's real life, because we don't want to make a show. We want to show you only what we can do with our instruments, with our software, with our lab, with our technology today. And we want to bring everything together and we don't want to hurry. We don't want to do something what can be a risk for a patient or what can be um, something only to show. So it can be that we make mistakes. It can be... So also what happens when you take a patient to choice a patient. We, 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 it's, it's, it's not so easy because patients um, have different problems than when they came to a situation that they need a big restoration like that. It can be something um, where everything inside, from sinus lift to emplacement, from implants, smile creator, or whatever you need. So to do things like that, you need really, really good things to do, you know? And we have three different, we choice three different patients because we have one for today, one for tomorrow, and then there was a third patient. And we are very happy that we have uh, some sponsors like Camlock with us, and uh, they uh, help us to, to help these patients to, to have the implants and some facilities, and that's very cool. We are very happy to have the University of Frankfurt in the boat, and um, these three patients are three desires from different people. Each one wants something else. And we have three extremely challenges. But of course, we can only operate one patient today. We can do everything. And it's a long time, you saw it before, long time to uh, prepare all the things, all the different modules to create one patient. And the patient we, we choose are patients they need. A lot of these things they need from exoplan, they need to all to recreate, uh, to be, we need to do mock ups, we do everything, we place implants, and they have everything only in one patient. Dear colleagues, on behalf of the Goethe University in Frankfurt, I want to cordially welcome you to our University Dental Institute Carolinum to take part here in the life surgery of the second ExoCut Insight. I'm really proud and honored to present you today the future in dentistry. We will show you how it is possible to bring together the necessary different innovative technologies on one platform to guarantee a perfect, immediate, restoration of a patient regarding functional and aesthetics aspects. We will present you in a hybrid format for the first time so that you can online and offline look and learn. For this, now sit back, relax, enjoy and learn what we will present you here, how such a digitally based perfect restoration will happen. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks to Professor Vasada. And now we're switching to the university, is that right? They are waiting to, to start. You can go over to the university, please. Hello, I'm Michael. Can you hear me? Wow, very good. We are, we are here waiting for you to start. And also, I'm very happy to be part of the team. I don't want to talk too much, just show a few things. We have now here the, the situation uh, with the patient still having all his teeth in his mouth. And in this case, we're working with a double guide. And this is basically based on the fact that we need to extract some teeth before. So you see, this is basically the first guide here. And if you see now, we're placing this inside the mouth. It's not fitting in there because still all the teeth are in there. So what we're going to do now is extract some of these teeth to be able to place the third guides. 
and then we'll start with the drilling procedure. And I think, uh, Uli, you can continue with your lecture, and then once we have extracted the teas, or maybe you want to see one, um, you can come back. So, um, thanks to Dr. Uh, Professor Sada that we can be in his room, so that's, that's amazing. And um, that's something what I want to tell you, because why uh, we are there, because I'm working also a little bit at the University of Frankfurt. I'm lecturing in the MOI programs, and I'm um, also uh, a little bit crazy, but I'm also a student of the Master of Dental Technician, uh, Dental Technology. So. Um, Working a little bit in the university, combining all these things, all these people, we are able to be there and uh, very proud that they are doing that with us and that we have an amazing team behind us to do things like that. So, I want to explain you a little bit the steps, the steps to reach or what we are doing when we're doing a case like that. So we are starting uh, in the first appointment to make the choice for the right patients. So this will be, uh, these are basic steps, but it's important to know what we have done because someone of you, sure, uh, they will do it or every time and other people maybe want to really register it, what we can do step by step. So the first appointment of the patient is uh, the, the, we will have, we need all the information, so we need some impressions or, one, or an oral scan or, or study impressions to understand a little bit how is the situation of the patient. That will be the first step. Then we do a panoramic, so with the panoramic we can understand how is the situation of the bone, if he is a candidate to do things like that or whatever we can do, we can only see in a first diagnostics. What we are doing, we're doing some pictures from the patient. It's very important to have pictures from the patient to understand what kind uh, of possibilities we have. So, um, and the next step will be the evaluation of all these things together and to have uh, to understand uh, what kind of patient and if he can do it, if he can uh, approach all these risks and if he can, uh, the costs, if it's are very, sometimes very high, in that case the patients are fortunate because they are uh, a little bit, yeah, we help them a little bit to do these cases and that's very good. So this is the initial diagnostics and that would be the appointment where we have a lot of patients. And then we have to make the choice which patient is able to come over in our um, surgery and we have to, of course, to see if, it's, if they're strong enough to do a surgery like that because we want to place a lot of implants and it needs time. I think these two hours, what I want to tell you, we don't want to work in two hours to define everything. We will show you steps in these two hours and where we are, we are. Okay, because sometimes I did uh, di different surgeries, life surgeries, where you have 30 minutes, one hour, and you have to do it. In any case, what happens, happens. Here it's real life and it's future project. This is completely digital dentistry in the future. It is nothing what you can do every day. So it's something where you, have to can, you can learn and you go on step by step. Our patients, each patient has a life, social life, has a lot of things behind. And why did he reach this situation? And, and you have to understand everything. And it's not each patient can have a big restoration. They have to be prepared to, to clean the things, to be able to, to use the teeth afterwards. So if someone is smoking too much or whatever, and in the, in the end, maybe it doesn't make sense doing something like that. Because what we want to do, we want to change the life of these patients. Having three patients, having three different minds and wishes, of course, because these people have all done different things in their life. Our first one of these three patients, what we have, it was Patrick. Patrick is a nice guy. We came over at the 24th of um, August to take all the, all the information of these patients. And we did some interviews with them. I won't show you the whole interviews, but I want to show you some wishes and some situations, how they start. If I had a magic wand, the perfect solution for me would be a beautiful smile. Beautiful and straight teeth with no gaps, 
basically without any problems. And this is just the first patient, and of course, he's young and he's strong, and uh, he can afford all this surgery today, and it's the, the patient where we are operating. Maybe you, you recognize it on his teeth. What we are doing right now is Patrick. Patrick is the one from today. Then we have Christiane, and Christiane has a similar situation. She lost happiness with her teeth, you know, she has a lot of problems had in her life, and for us it's very emotional to make them happy, all these people, all these three people. And uh, you see what is with, Ideally, with her. Ideally, it would be fantastic if I could laugh freely again, could show my teeth, and didn't have to be ashamed of them. And above all, the ability to eat everything again. I have been torturing myself for a very long time and had problems with my teeth from a young age. I would love to get rid of pain and be free again. Yes, you see, all patients are different. You see on the picture on the right side, you see uh, that the teeth have no chance to be there. They have to go away, we have to extract them. This is a big decision, it's a clinical decision. I'm a dental technician, so it's not my choice. Uh, we discuss it in the team, we discuss it with everybody. Uh, if it's necessary to, to extract some teeth, if there are some teeth able to stay there, we keep them. But we have to clean up things where are risk for the work for the future. So in the end, um, she had a similar situation like Patrick. Then we have Renate. Renate is an old lady, a very, very, very kind, nice lady. She is 84 years old. And what was our thought is to do an operation, a life surgery, about some hours like that, um, it would be too heavy for her. So, in the end, she was the third patient. And normally, we wanted to sponsor or to help two patients, but she was so nice that we it was emotional to say no to her, you know, that you can go home. Yeah. But in the end, it was so nice also from the University of Frankfurt to say, don't care, we will do that. And Jonas Lawrence will operate them the next weeks and we will have all of these patients, we will have in the future some information, some pictures and whatever we have done, you will see in the future. So this is Renate. A mouth where all my teeth had grown evenly. From the back teeth to the front teeth, everything nice and even, as you see it in the magazine. That it looks better, that I can eat properly again, when everything is perfect in my mouth. So you see, we are using a lot of digital tools. <laughs> That's the most important thing. But, um, so to send her home without to make her happy, it was not possible. So we will do that. We will do all the three patients. And, and then we have to start, after the choice for the patient, we have to start to work on the university. We go to Frankfurt to take all the steps, all the necessary things we need. Because we don't need any more a lot of appointments. Because we have a plan. We have a perfect plan to work on it. So for this plan, we need the basics. And the basics, I will show you step by step what we need. So it was, it's not so long, it was some weeks ago, 24 of August. Because also, DICOM data has to be fresh. You cannot use DICOM data from six months before for a surgery like that, because things are changing. So it has to be just in time, it has to be, you have to be attached to the surgery and everything doing step by step. What point, I have a look at what point they are. Oh, they are quite, I can see what they are doing, and they are on a very good moment. We will see them soon. So, I explain you the steps, and the steps are the B, or the data collection. Uh, of course, we take an inter-oral scan. It's the first thing to do. So, we have the first data. Then, we need the DICOM data for the implant planning, and we are doing uh, all the things, all in the university in Frankfurt. We take a face scan, of course. 
And then where we are working is something, I don't want to say new, but it's something what I'm, uh, I have in my eyes for years, because we are talking about guided surgery, talking about uh, years ago from all on four, guided surgery, digital dentistry, but there was one point missing. And that was, for my idea, occlusion. And now we are quite round. We can also make occlusion movements through module. So we did a combination to all of these different things to make everything round. Then we need the pictures for the smile creator, of course, because if not, we cannot do the smile creator. Then we make these interviews with the patients, what they want, because we have to know to make them happy. Of course, we need the color. We can do it just in the same moment. We can do it with pictures. We can do measurements, whatever you want. But what I'm doing in a case like that, we take, I trust a lot, digital dentistry, but these are extreme cases. So for extreme cases, I prefer to take a normal impression to make, in the end, a last check if everything is working well and if everything is going in a good position. So that's very important for my, for my idea, because we don't want to fly, we want to do very good and cool works for this patient and we want to be in a safety area. Of course, we are doing scientific documentation. We will document everything what you will see in the future. Maybe we will do some uh, publication about these works. And we do the diagnostics and the uh, communication. So, now we step into all these different things, what we are doing. So the first is the interval scan. This was with the line technology. So Michael uh, did all the scans. And what we have in all this workflow right now, it will be only Patrick, because I don't want to uh, show you all three patients right now, because it will be in the future. So I see that they are going fast, and that we can soon be with them. And... Hello, Uli. Hi. Uh, we are back now. We extracted the teeth. And what we have our first guide now here, as you can see. And basically now, sorry, can you just move the arm away that I can see? Um, so this guide is now the one we have our first guide. We extracted the teeth, which you can see here inside the mouth very carefully. We maintained all the bone, which was possible. And now we place the guide on the remaining teeth to be able to place the implants correctly. And this is one of the most important things to always check that the guide is in the right position because otherwise all your planning is useless. The most important thing, that's why we have these windows here, as you can see. And these windows help us so that we can see that the guide is on the correct position. And what we will start now is basically the implant placement. So um, we will start with implant one four is the first one, right? Yes, if we go so from I one side to the other the machine. side. Yeah. So Tessa, jetzt den uh, pre, genau, den pre drill einmal. So we basically have our first burr here. We use from the Chemlight, Chemlock guided system. Very important that we use this one to flatten the ridge. And now it's important mm -hmm. that the nurse and you together stabilize yeah. the guide in the right position. And then we go down. Uh, Tessa, ich brauche hier Bohrverlängerung. So you can see now I'm coming in contact with the tooth which is in front of that. So what I need to do now, I need to use the drill extension to be able to get around there. So you can see here. Wie bitte? Eins, vier. Also. Alles okay, Patrick? Gut, schlimmer als das wird's nicht. So we can see already a little bit contact. And then we can uh, basically, for the implant on the opposing <laughs> side, we need the tissue punch. 
because there we, is the only position where we didn't have the tooth before. So we need to punch the gum in the area, which we can later on place back. Tessa Mikroskalpel und Jana einmal die Schablone rausnehmen, bitte. So, so now we have made the perforation there. It's extremely precise. In order not to need the need to raise a flap, and we just cut out the gum we used with the tissue punch before, which we will then later on can be able in Raspa, I know, Klein. Okay. Yeah. The precision, precision, the precision of the guide um, is, you see... The precision of the guide is very good. And uh, what's the strange thing, you cannot try it before because you have teeth. So you have to, to do a little bit... Hmm? Sorry? Ganz dringend auf Toilette. Was können wir da machen? Um, kann ich einmal eins, zwei Bohrungen machen und dann gehen? Oder tut dem Mund was weh? Okay. Können wir das irgendwie machen, dass wir dann äh, Toilette einmal frei machen und die Tücher? <lacht> ja. This is so, real life. Tissue Punch nochmal mit der Verlängerung. <lacht> ja. So we basically will continue the drilling and Uli can continue with the lecture. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We will do s some interruption. Okay. Thank you. Switch over to the lecture. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is what I told you. It's real life. These patients are, are normal, normal patients, and we don't hurry anything. We take our time. And I saw that uh, I was, was very happy because you know when you're doing a, a planning a guided surgery like that, and you're doing a guide on post-extractive areas, so you can have the problem that the guide is not going in position. So that, that then is everything finished because just I, I, I had something like that some months ago, then you have to interrupt because uh, about Corona, it was a problem when you take the impression before COVID and you want to make the surgery after COVID, no precision anymore. So you have to be very, very careful about these steps and you need all the right tools to do that because in the end, uh, you will have enough problems if not. So back to the interoral scan. That was the first step. Then we take the pictures from Patrick. Um, of course, he, he has a nice smile, but okay, he was unhappy with this situation and um, had to extract his teeth. That was a problem. So in the end, we have him to see them from both sides. You can uh, go on and you make the pictures for the smile creator. The smile creator was amazing this morning. Um, Waldo showed how to do it, and it's one step, it's everything, a very, very uh, exciting thing to do these things and to put everything together. Of course, the face scan, we need the face scan, and uh, there we used uh, the Belos face scan. Yeah, that's it, okay. Look at the camera. Turn left. Turn to the middle. Turn right. Turn to the middle. Tilt your head up. Turn to the middle. Tilt your head down. Turn to the middle. Capture completed. Please come to your cap. Tilt your head up. Tilt your head down. And all this data you need to place in the software. This is the work before. You see we need the DICOM and also this we did in Frankfurt and he is uh, doing all the registrations and everything and then we have the, all the material to place in the software afterwards. You can see, you see also the problems with his, with his um, teeth, not so much bone. It's a, it's a challenge to do things like that. So then, a very important thing is the module of registration. We did it afterwards. With all three patients, we did the same job. Patrick, in the end, is go coming back to surgery. So they are cleaning a little bit up, and we are coming back to them in a few 
minutes. Um, okay, so for the Mojo registration, we were happy to have uh, Wazim in the team with us. He came over from Lyon. He, is, uh, d he, he did the registration with us because he knows the machine very well. And uh, he's part of the team of the developers. The invitation from Maxime and from Antran is our friends from, uh, from me. And uh, so we did all this research. You can see what happens there. It's not even an articulator because the articulator is always an instrument outside. The patient is our articulator. So in that moment, we can register all movements. We let him chew, we let him uh, talk, we let him make lateral movements, and the machine register all these movements. It is a video registration in the end, and this will be together in the end in the information what we can export in ExoCut. So that's amazing, because we have a very, very important part, the occlusion, inside in our platform. So that was all to take all these uh, different steps. And it was not so much, but it was a day work. And we were eight or nine people working there. It was hard to do everything, because three patients and desires and everything to do and explain. So, let, can we go over to, to the surgery? Yes. Okay. So, basically we're starting and uh, we as well collecting a little bit of bone during the drilling procedure. Um, dann gib mir da schon mal den nächsten einmal, die nächste Größe. And the system is very nicely because we don't have any, any spoons, so we can go directly into the socket. Most important thing is always to make sure that you stabilize the guide correctly. You can collect a little bit of bone. And give me the first one. Huh? Super. And we are starting to place uh, the implants quite close to the middle because of the fact that we want to stabilize Stabilize the, the guide with the implants as well. Make sure that you have sufficient cooling. Nadine, can you give me one more for you? And in the meantime, Tessa is always collecting the bone from the burr. Very nice to collect this bone. We can then later on use for the other side. Das ist jetzt welche Länge? So we are now with uh, length 11. I can feel that for both of the implants I have already good stability, so I won't do any under preparation. In case that I would feel already that the bone is very soft, I would then only go with the last drill of one dimension smaller. So in this case, we're going to place 4.3 times 13. Okay. Den brauchen wir aber fast gar nicht mehr. 4 times 3 uh, times 13. In case I want to do under preparation, I would only go with 3.3, uh, with 3.8 times 30. So the last burr was one size smaller. Again, stabilizing the guide. Collecting the bone. Das ist 13. Just wait. Um, das ist welcher? 11. Okay. So we go the other side, 11. And it's very important that you keep keep cleaning these burrs. So don't go this, 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 because otherwise you will uh, overheat the bone. So, yeah. So Tessa is always nicely cleaning the bone of the burr.
So we use our last verb. So also here. So in case I would feel that the bone is very dense, which is not in the upper jaw, I could even use a dense bone drill. So what we're going to do now, we also going to check again without the guide if the position is sufficient, how the bone level is around the area, just to make sure that all the planning is correct. Uh, scharfen Löffel nochmal bitte. Super. Das ist gut, dann kannst du die lassen. Das looks good. Gib mir da nochmal den Dance Bone Drill, Tessa bei dem. Ähm, den Dance Bone Drill für 13, das ist. Genau, ja, korrekt, korrekt. Nee, den, den 13, das ist richtig. Den hier. 13, ja. So. In case of uh, the fact that we have very bo dense drill, a uh, dense bone, we have a special burr here we can use. Put the guide back. And then afterwards, uh, we can already open the implants. Always making sure that the guide is in the correct position, which looks good here. And in this area where we uh, didn't extract the tooth, we're going to use the dense bone drill not to have too much pressure there. Okay, then we can open the implant, the first for area one six. So I repeat for implant area one six. Thank you. Here you see all the steps. Perfect. That's the preparation, so the brain I guided. I can show you how the system <laughs> works here. 4, 3, 13 volt. So we need 4.313. Thank you. This is kind of alcohol, no? Okay. So I take out the implant now, very carefully. And this is also now basically the positioning tool for the implant in the guide. So we change the speed. So we can see now we have already 30 Newton centimeters. I change the machine now to 50 Newton centimeters to check. Now you can stop also, you can make also the and other now side. Now we can before. see that the implant is nice in place. Yeah. I can I'm on Spiegel side. Or maybe, maybe you can see yourself, I think it's easier without mirror. The implant went down now, and obviously this is important that you have a system where you can play a little bit. Okay. I don't know if you can see it in the mirror, maybe. Oh, we saw it. The implant is perfect in position. We can use two four now. Does the implant start to open? No, pass. It's very important to do the other this side. This is always basically the challenge, and what you have to try out a little bit uh, that with the without the dense bone drill in cases where you do immediate implant placement. Sometimes it's sufficient, sometimes you need it, because in this case, the bone, even though it's upper jaw, is very dense. So we had the thing. And the, the implant is again uh, 4.3 times 13, right? So also here. So to place the implant on the other side is a little bit like with, with the car when you change a wheel. So you never place one side. You, you need always one side and the other side so to keep the it in the implant. right position.
And we can see also now we have this next implant in place, which looks very good. So basically, we will continue. Yeah. I'm if Willie wants to go ahead with the lecture, that's fine. Otherwise, yes, okay. we will place the other implants. Okay. So next one is position 1-1. One, one. Okay, I'm so going on. And you will work. Thanks a lot. See you later. So now I'm coming back to the lab. And I will show you the steps what we have done in the last week. After the 24, we have to finish all the cases, we have to print everything and to prepare everything for today. So that was an amazing part, which one the uh, patient doesn't know, maybe the dentist doesn't know, and we are working behind every day and we have to exchange a lot, of course, ideas with implant positions and everything, but it's going on step by step. So I show you here the steps. We have the data in the lab. And with this data, we start to prepare the complete digital workflow because we have to place everything together on the platform that can work together step by step. We choose the right pictures for do smile design or smile uh, creator and whatever. And uh, we are starting to create the smile in that moment afterwards. Creating the smile and we do the evaluation of the module because the movements of the patients, in the end, are giving also a lot of important information. Then we place everything in, in the Exoplan software and can plan with the new positions of the new smell creator design. We can place exactly the implants. We try to place them if the bone uh, gives us space enough in the right position for prosthetical. Um, maximum. So the surgical guide design, we will do that, then we do the temporary design, and uh, then we have all together and we will do the movements with, with Mojo and to understand exactly where we have uh, to, to place all the different T's in position. So then the last or one of the last uh, positions is printing and milling. And the most important thing, of course, is security and check control, because that, without that, you cannot go blind in a surgery like that. So it has to be prepared 100%. And of course, we're doing photography. If not, we could not show anything to you here. So printing is the next step. We are printing, of course. We're printing every day in our lab. We have a small lab, there are only five, six people working because we have so much big cases and uh, it's very complicated to have new people in the team. These guys and people are working for years for me. There's uh, one, she's working 20, Nicola is working 26 years for me and uh, they need everybody in my team is working for a long time because we just look each one to the other and we know what we have to do. So uh, it goes step by step and we're preparing all models. These are the situation models, like our three patient starts before. And uh, so we have all the T's in position and it's the most important thing to have. We have these articulators printed out, of course, just to have the situation where the patient starts with. And then we start with the smile creator. And this is amazing how it works but nobody's doing that better than Valdo. I would like to ask him to call him, help me. <laughs> but uh, in the end, we did it. And I think for the patient, it's a very good solution. The problem is also to, to, to place the teeth in other positions because he has a lot of space in between the incisors and he don't want to have it anymore. So you have you have to be, you, you are not in the positions, you know, where you like to be in. It's not in the same place where the first incisor was. We, we change positions. And you can see that there, and we have to close it. And then, so it's always a little bit of compromise to place it in a perfect, in a perfect place. So, and this was a smile created for him. And what have we have uh, in the next step is that we have the smile, his old smile and his new smile. So he's not opening too much his mouth. It was quite difficult to, to motivate him to open his mouth because he's used to keep him closed, probably. In the next future, probably he will laugh <laughs> a little bit more. 
So what we have is a module registration, and you can see different things. The protrusion, you can do. You have all these movements, and these movements are necessary to create the occlusion in the right way for this patient because we want to hire him a little bit. And we, you can do it exactly on, on, on the same road how he is doing his occlusion and his movements. You see, it's writing down all movements of this patient. We have all these informations. We have things are disturbing also, you see it in the line. And um, then you have, you can add everything what you want. place a new smile inside the new uh, superior, and then you have the face of the patient, and you have all his movements inside. And that helps exactly to find a new um, vertical dimension. You can find a new situation, and you can see uh, how you can protect and guide uh, the canines and everything inside in the software, and you can find of course, you need some know-how about, you need uh, to understand exactly how it works, but it's not so complicated like it seems to be. Then you can export this modular movements into the um, ExoCut software, and you make this movement, and you can, in that case, you can exactly see where are pre-contact points, and you can define the lower arch exactly uh, in relationship to the upper jaw, in the same movements like the patient it has. So it gets, with this, it's not to take out the work and place in the articulator. So you take it, you keep it inside in this workflow, in the digital workflow, and that's what, what we want to do. Then when we are ready with all this data, we start planning. So we were very happy to have uh, Camlock in the boat to, um, to help us with, with a progressive line and to give us all the different uh, needs for these patients. And here you can see the implants. And this is a camphor basement in between because, you know, when we are doing cases like with eight implants, to make a screwed retained um, restoration, you cannot have uh, divergence. So you have, you need, you need uh, from the, the internal hexagon, it will be an external hexagon with the camphor, and you have, you are, these um, implants are very deep, and you have the distance to come near to the gum. So it's uh, better to, and uh, more easy to place uh, screwed retained works afterwards. And you have the provisional abutments, and all of them, they are someone very small, and you all of them together will be that where we glue afterwards our provisional. Then the implant placement, the basement of the implant placement, of course, is a situation, a new situation for the patient. And so we have to try to place the, the teeth that the prosthetical uh, drive and implants exactly are in the center of each tooth. And then we can work on it and we can do the planning. I'm very, very uh, lucky that we, uh, in the future, will we have more tools with the new software. Here we have uh, a little bit, uh, we worked on the old one, and, but uh, there was no time for the new one. And so we, we started to do these things and uh, we did some tries afterwards in the other one software to see how it works, but it will be in the next weeks more interesting. So you see, you have the prosthetical position is not easy in that case because the bone in that position has not so much bone because he lost all the bones, the cortical bone in front of his teeth. So we are more inside with the implants. So I would love to have it more easy, but this our patient, we have done these patients and there is no ideal patient. Each patient has his own story. And so you, mostly we can place them exactly in the center, but here the implants we wanted to place uh, straight implants were falling a little bit outside. But that's fine because we do the little provisional a little bit stronger and then it will be fine. Here you see the nice place implant in the position. 
that was now Michael is doing on the other side. And uh, this is a picture of a planning, what I can show you if you're doing all on four. There will be more tomorrow in the other case. So you will have in the all on four, you have the possibilities to, to turn around the angulated abutments. You turn them around where you need them. Have a look, that's cool. And you place it exactly where you want. Tomorrow he has, of course, to respect the exact position. It's uh, a pity that you cannot see tomorrow's other surgery, because so you see different ways to work. And uh, unfortunately, the patient, um, Christina, she will tomorrow, she will have um, a little bit less bone. So in the end, there will be some more things to do uh, in this other surgery. So um, we have more and all on four on the lower arch. So you see what I told you before, the ideal position of the implants would be a little bit more inside. But as this patient has no bone in that area, we do this compromise and we'll compromise and we will put the teeth in the provision a little bit more outside and fill them up. But it will be always a screw retained restoration. Then we step to the double guide technique. Um, if you understood it before, like it works, and we will see later on when you change the guide. So we are doing no anchor pins. The placement is very, very sure, because I don't know how to explain it, but it's a little bit like free climbing. You have always a hand and a foot in place, and you will never fall down. You know, you have exactly, we keep four teeth, and the four teeth are defined. Mucosa, gum, is not defined. So it can move, and it can change. And teeth have a very, very perfect position. And so if you can use four teeth for place a guide, it's wonderful. You place it inside, you saw how precise, precise it was before. He places it, it's holding himself. The guide don't need uh, this is anchor pins because he has a lot of blood and trouble with the anchor pins and more work for the patient and more uh, invasive so it's uh, with, a, with this strategy, it's a strategy to do that you can um, have exactly a very good result without losing position so you see on the left side you see exactly how uh, we have the first guide, and you see in the inspection windows, those inspection windows you can exactly place in, in the exoplan software, or in, the, in the software when you're doing the guide, you can place them on top, and it's very important that the surgeon can see them. Sometimes people placing the windows behind and you cannot see them. You need it in the right points. So once he finished this surgery, the first step of the surgery, you do you place uh, the guide away, and you extract, in that case, only the canines, both, and you take the second guide, and the second guide will fit exactly in the same position, because he has the same print, and you will fix and block it on 4-4. Four, four. When you block it, you cannot block it in three parts, it's okay, you block it, but two are enough. So you replace, you go on with your, with your free climbing, you go to the next step, holding the same position. This is something what I'm doing for years. Maybe it's not a lot of people doing that. I, uh, I think it's logic, it's step by step. And I don't know how many surgeons are right now online, but uh, we can discuss and you can write uh, when you have questions about that and what you think about that. Not everybody maybe will be have the same opinion. So you see the right side, the second guide. So let's see the steps. We did here a simulation. And so you have the teeth to extract in this color. Then you can extract them. And then you see the sleeves. And also this is a, is a uh, not easy thing to do because there are distances between the sleeve and the implant. And when you have um, 
that camlog is uh, favorizing to say it has to be three millimeters, and when you're doing post extractive implants, three millimeters sometimes are uh, a challenge because when you put out the teeth, you have a lot of gum, and so this distance is in total is uh, seven uh, seven point nine millimeters from the top of the sleeve going down to the implant. So you have to place them in exact positions, and you will find them afterwards in the guide, in his position. And you see also the inspection windows. And, and then, before you have these teeth, the second guide, and you extract everything. But we keep the last one because we don't, they are not disturbing the implants. You have to extract, of course, those um, teeth which one are disturbing the position of the implant. And so we have there uh, left them for until the, until the end to have one position. And this is the second guide, and he will be fixed on four and four. You see the direction, and you see the second guide. It's quite step by step and it's logical, it's not so complicated. The only complicated thing is to understand exactly what happens and where will be the bone you have to manage. As well. You need brain-guided implantology because you have to know everything before what happens, that's very important. So it's a lower jaw. Also there we can extract all the teeth. There we don't work with two guides, we work only with one guide. And we have six implants in the lower jaw. The front teeth we can keep because they are quite okay. And we will do a, a mock-up on the front teeth for this patient. And we will do uh, that we will do not today everything. We place a mock-up on top in the end of the surgery when he is ready, so she, he will have his complete smile. But not ready, he's it. Of course, it's also a provisional work, what we are doing right now. He will keep in six months or three months, he will have the definitive work. And you will see that in the future, probably. So you see implants after extraction. You see there are two, two other implants, the yellow ones. And then you see there are different directions. And then we go on and print our guides. You see, one patient, three guides. Sometimes four, sometimes two, depends. How is the position, how is the situation? When we sleeve the sleeve, we place, uh, afterwards we place the sleeves. We don't know, don't need to place all the sleeves. You see in the middle is the second guide, we don't need them all. We need the important ones, there's of course the canine. We need the one where we want to block the guides. And the back where there's not so much space, we don't place him these sleeves because it's needless, so in the end. And the lower jaw is only the sleeves with everything and the inspection windows, and you have everything. And this is the one, what I told you, 7.9 millimeters from the head of the implant to the sleeve. And that is something what you have to know. It's not automatic work. You have to understand in your head exactly what you're doing. And if you know these measurements, it will be safer. You had to have it. So I, I'm coming uh, from 15 years guided implantology. I started with, with these hand machines where you control, where you see the computer, and on the other side, you place it on the model, so you get an understanding for things like that. So you print out your models, and you have the possibility to place in the models the um, the analogs inside, you place one by one, it has a defined position. It has also a position, uh, you know also the hexagon and everything, or trailon, this is one, is, uh, you place it exactly in the place where it will be in the mouth afterwards. You have the gum, you print out the gum. Of course, you need, if you have a big lab, you need a lot of printers. <laughs> One, two, three, three, everybody uh, needs a lot of printers for each material, because there are a lot of materials today. And uh, then afterwards, you can place all the components on top. This is a camphor. And you can place also um, all the provisional abutments. And that can help you afterwards to go on and place the provisional. 
Then when you are inside in ExoCut, you define the occlusion, the one you have got from Mojo. So you can make all the movement and you can change all the form of these teeth and all the movements and uh, contact points before. And then, step by step, you go on milling. And when you mill it, you have the circular bridge. In, this one is in PMMA. You have to see that the, that, the, uh, that it's strong enough. Because if uh, implants or if provisional breaks, it's a problem. You can lose the implants. So in the end, it has to be something it's not only nice, it has to be strong. It's more imp important to be strong than to be nice, okay? In the end, it's better to have some more material, or if not, if you see that it's very fine, you need a metal frame inside to block everything together, and you can do it also by hand in composite. I did a lot of works with a metal frame. You can also mill the metal frame, and you can place by hand composite on top, because sometimes patients don't have money, uh, and they want to do the work, but they cannot afford a definitive work, and so maybe a good metal frame provisional can keep for two, three, four years in the mouth of a patient until he's feeling well to do the definitive one. And then you have your results. And this is a mock-up of what we have done for the lower jaw and they will place it afterwards in the mouth. Let's have a look how, at what kind of points they are in the surgery. Can they hear us? Can you talk with them? No, I don't think so. Not, I don't know what points they are. I go on a little bit with my lecture. I will tell you something else, also some handwork. And um, because when you are working on these models, you, can, you have the gum coming out of the gum. And when you are placing in the end the uh, framework, the framework, the, the, um, the bridge, it's not so nice to work under the gum. It's better to be on the level of the gum. So I prepare some um, composite uh, basements on the temporary abutment to just design the form of the, of the outcome of the teeth. And you can, in that place, you place them, and it's coming out, and you do the, the gluing a little bit over the gum, and you are ready to, to have everything clean, clean and prepared, and you don't need to, to, to work under with blood and things under the gum. So this is a step you can see there. And then you have the provisional bridge. And this is on the lower jaw. Uh, the, the front teeth are printed. The mock-up and the rest is milled. Like I told you, it has to be very strong. So in the middle, we keep this piece of composite or of uh, um, PMMA in the center, because so we don't lose the occlusion. We place it, place it on top, and uh, then um, Paul will fix it, and it has the same occlusion like we are agreed from the beginning with Mojo. This is a 3D printed temporary solution. You see them, it's also nice, it's a mono, is a block, it's not uh, done with composite, it's done with um, a multicolor block. And what I told you before, we take some impressions for security. And that's very important to have the security for the patient to be sure that everything is in the right position. Are they coming over? Okay, so um, you see, we control if everything is going down. It's very important in a case like that. Then thanks to Chemlock, because it was amazing. I was in the lab, we have to work on it, and there was a box like that, and they sent me all the pieces for these three patients, and to place everything in good positions, and I was very happy about that. And this is the puzzle where they're working on later today when they finish with the surgery. And I think...
we can go over to Let them. Check. Let me just check. OK. Oh. Am, am I live again? Yes, you yeah, are here. Perfect. Good. So we need our time. That's, uh, I prefer, if we're doing everything very well, we have two hours for that. We will never finish everything. I hope that we place all the implants and show you the provisional in position. Yes, so we can see also the last implant is nice in position. So, why mod jaw versus others? Why, why did you use that one? Why I use that one? Um, because I saw the development for years, and um, I, I found it amazing. And uh, I don't know exactly um, what the others. There are some systems on the market. I, I'm sure they will be really good also. But I have no experience with the other ones. And uh, I found in Mojo everything what, what I, I, I was looking for. OK. Do you place the implants sequentially or alternate for guide stability? Yeah, alternate. You alternate. have always, I, I like with a your, car. Yeah. <laughs> That was a good comparison. <laughs> That's a German one. Was ist, wenn Knochen nivelliert werden soll? Gibt es die Möglichkeit, eine Nivellierschablone herzustellen? Wenn der, uh, yeah, okay. If, if you have a, to make a regulation of the bone, it's in the plan. You have to know it before, and there's nobody uh, better than people like like uh, Michael to see things, what happens with bone, and they make decisions. Okay. We have to go back. We will just ask to go back. So yeah. Ready? Sehr gute Primärstabilität. Wow. Ja. Looks clean. Kurzen, wir haben auch so einen kurzen Schraubenzieher. We are on. So we have placed every implant for the first guide. Now you can see maybe in the position here, everything is nice in place. So what we're going to do now is unscrew the guide, and hopefully, no implant will come out with the guide, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's. Uh, can happen, yeah, of course. <laughs> so you are testimonial of everything what we are doing here. So in the end, it's live. Yes, it's live, yeah. No, I remember the times because more than 10 years, 15 years, we were working on that the projects uh, that people I said, I did it in 25 minutes, the other one in 20, I in 20. But it's not important the time, it's important the result because so we have our patients and not, not a race, you know? So what you see is real dentistry, it's digital dentistry. Also, if you are like uh, digital dentistry, interesting, you can join our society, we are the Digital Dentistry Society. Okay. So and now we have a lot of things like that. Take out the carriers. Very good. So also with this situation, we already have uh, six implants nice in place, which is not too bad. <laughs> so all the things are out that you can see here. And Perfect. now we're going to take out the guide. Great job. And we're going to rinse a little bit, and then you can see the situation here now. Thank you. Tupfer um, and zweiten guide. Okay, extractions. So we can see all the implants are nice in place, also from the position here. Very minimal invasive. We didn't raise a flap. So I show you now the second guide. This is right, isn't it? So the second guide is stabilized on the remaining teeth, one uh, eight and two eight in the back. And the problem is now we still have those teeth in the position of the implant. So we need to take them out now before being able to place the implant in that area. Microscalpel and then... So always trying as minimal as possible and also by pulling out you can always rip a lot of the gum which is very important for the proper closure of the area there. 
Dr. Bertolt, can you hear me uh, for questions? Are you ready for yes, questions? Yes, I can or? hear you. Perfect. There's a question yes, for I'm you. Yes, I'm ready for questions. Yeah. How can you be sure bone is um, intact on the buccal if flaps are not raised? If, I, I still can basically feel with either a spoon or a probe how the situation is on the, the buccal side. And even if the buccal bone is missing, I mean, in this case, we were lucky because he had very thick bone. So from that point of view, it, it wasn't a problem because what we're going to do, we're going to augment in the area on the buccal side anyway later on. Maybe you can see here now in the anterior region, we have a gap there. And if we place some etogenous bone in the area, it's basically a three-wall defect. So we won't have any issues from that point of view. Um, uh, Hebel, okay. Hebel. okay. Yeah. Another one? How is guide stabilized if there is no implant carrier? But I think there was... Uh, if the implant carrier is not in place, no then it's very important that you and the nurse stabilize the gum guide with your fingers. Okay. Yeah. That's the most important thing that you always check that the guide is nice in position and you and your nurse are holding it nicely in the area. So, therefore, I think it's very important to have a system which doesn't require spoon or is an advantage because there you can fully concentrate on holding the guide in the right position. Mm -hmm. so. so, two of the remaining teeth we needed to extract are out now, and the last one is coming now. We left by intention for now the remaining teeth, so the wisdom teeth in the area of 1.8 and 2.8 to be able to stabilize the gum there as well. Oh. Tooth is out as well, so all teeth are out nicely. Well, perfect. Patrick did it great. So, so now to, to the question again, if, how I can be sure if I don't raise a flap? So I can see here now when I'm pushing, the gum is not moving. So we have intact bone until here. Same on this side, when I'm pushing, the bone is intact, and also here. Very good. So now, right. maybe I'll, sh sh yeah, you can rinse. The second guide, I'll show how I put the second guide on now. So next challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cross my fingers. So also, uh, what Paul just mentioned, of, of course, we have seen it in, in the CBCT already before, that the bone is very dense. So now you can see the, the second guide is stabilized, Sorry. The second guide is stabilized on the wisdom mm -hmm. teeth, and we're going to use implant in position one, four, and two, four to be able to place the remaining implants there. So we can see this fits very nicely now. Good job, Oli. I'm done. I'm the, uh, not finished. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> if they, they are not going in the implants, <laughs> it can be tricky. Now we, we, we fix them with, with a mount or mm. place from so one this side. Is a now we, we basically go now going to try to fit in the area. So we have to do a little bit pressure there. Yeah, maybe don't screw him completely in. Maybe do both to the same moment, only a little bit. So you can see now this flipped in now. Den schrauben sie kurz. Not not too fast. Yeah. kurzen aber. Für die andere Seite. Now we're going to. So now afterwards the is the next moment. One, <laughs> one temp in that position. And the other one as well. Okay. Only for you, I think. Is there, um, is, is there as well a bone reduction guide possible if necessary, if you required? Of course, you yeah. can do that, yeah. You can do everything. <laughs> Good. Uh, I was waiting for this okay. question here. Why not remove all teeth and have a single guide uh, supported with anchor pins. 
because you are losing the, the control and the position. Okay. It's, uh, if you look in the literature, the there is uh, the gum is, is moving, the gum is changing. There are some, of course, it's, we are talking about very, very small yeah. difference, but... Mm. Um, so uh, you, would, you would say this is the safer way, the better way on, in terms of quality? We have to define it literally, uh, exactly. We are doing works uh, with this and trying it. We have to make a measurement from one to the other one. But uh, of course, the gum is never as precise as the tooth. Mm. Um, sure. Because two supported guides are more precise. So we're now removing the soft tissue we just punched. You can also move it a little bit distally. Okay. And now we're going to start the drilling procedure for the other side. So we stabilize it again a little bit. Just we separated the most complicated steps. The steps was that it's going in place. The first risk. Second risk is to fix the second guide. Mm -hmm. That if something is different. And um, so in the end, <coughs> these steps are done. So what is coming afterwards is more easy. Also the case, I can tell you something to the case tomorrow, we have a, uh, there we have an Olam 4 on the lower jaw, and we have also two guides tomorrow in the lower jaw, and the upper jaw is one guide. She has a lot of teeth, and we can keep some teeth in between. And at the lower jaw we have uh, one incisor, it can be until the end, so something will keep always position. Mm -hmm. So that will be tomorrow, and will be also two full arch bridges, upper and lower jaw, and um, and then the old lady, we will see next week what we, what we placed in her mouth. Just we did all the things to prepare, but it was from the time frame better to concentrate on those both cases. Mm -hmm. Patrick wants to go to the stadium to his friends and to present himself with new teeth. So that's... I don't, for I don't today. know whether we mentioned that. Uh, about he Patrick, mentioned that. He, yeah, yeah. he mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure whether you all guys all understood but that. He. But, but he's from Darmstadt. So no, he's from no, he's Darmstadt, from but he works for Frankfurt. No, but uh, I asked him uh, if he can, um, if he want to go on the stage with the T-shirt <laughs> from Frankfurt, <laughs> and he it's told me that his friends will kill him. <laughs> <laughs> so he works for the local, uh, actually the Frankfurt yeah, actually, football club. It's his not job. The he's on the. Yeah, yeah, he's working in the stadion and uh, taking care for all things for Eintracht, Eintracht, Frankfurt. Eintracht Frankfurt. Yes, that's where he's. Not uh, Darmstadt after the Nancy. And these, these are not best friends, these clubs. No? <laughs> As usual in neighborhood sports. So, that's He's nice. really doing great. Patrick is yeah. a fantastic patient, really brave. Yeah. Cool. And, Ma and Michael, you're doing an amazing job. Yes. I'm so happy. Here. I was less relaxed before. You did a now great job in preparation, I think, Uli. Oh, I don't know. We will see if the provisional fit. <laughs> After we be, if we are in time, uh, I will, we will see Paul placing the provisional. Can you hear you, me, Uli? Yeah, we can hear you perfectly. No? Great. Yeah, yeah, no, it's perfect. Uh, I have also a comment because some of the in the audience uh, say, okay, uh, why we need to um, uh, surgical guides, uh, double costs. Uh, but you have more costs if you uh, have more to do with occlusion and other things because uh, the soft tissue borne guidance is never perfect in accuracy of fit. And so this is a perfect yeah, invest if you Elba. have a second guide. Secondly, yeah. I want to comment uh, because of this uh, Congress that also the devices where we have in the digital chain is especially the 3D printer. And the 3D printer now produced mm -hmm. two surgical guides which uh, perfectly fit to each other, so they are more or less identically. 
And yeah. there's also a nice uh, publication since uh, I think one month ago that, that this accuracy of fit for these uh, templates are perfectly in the reproducibility of the guide. So if we have two guides, we are sure they are more or less identically in the position and therefore it fits on the already placed implant. So you don't have a headache if the second guide is not working perfectly on the already mm -hmm. placed implants. Yeah, was war das? 13? Yeah, yeah that's thanks to the 13? technology, yeah, or to the machines, to the printers. Yeah, we the have machines are very uh, accurate. Today. Yeah, this one was a 3D painter from... If you, if you make these uh, templates with the uh, with, uh, original or no analog uh, things like me, like a full denture, you, you get out of, a, uh, of precision. And even the milled one is a little bit tricky. So now Michael don't have to talk, he has to work. It's the yeah. Yeah. It's much faster. So Paul, another question or Uli? Question yeah. Or Uli? When you do a bone reduction guide, you open up yes. tissue and how are you going to fix this guide in this case? And after bone reduction, how you place the drill guide? With pins? Question mark? Depends. No, uh, yeah. bone reduction guide mostly is starting on the edentulous jaw. And here you have only one chance uh, to uh, make a fixation with screw or with pins. Yes. It depends on the system you use. And of course, you have to make a head uh, the flap, yeah, because you cannot make a bone reduction uh, uh, together with the soft tissue. This yeah. will end up in a mass. Mm -hmm. But I think every surgeon knows that, uh, so it's nothing special. And uh, there are two options. So after you make a bone reduction, you place a second one, which placing then the implants, but this is not so accurate. And therefore, we have this uh, approach nowadays uh, that after you make the bone reduction you click uh, on the second one or you have some connections uh, um, so that you don't have the, the need for removing the first template where we do the bone reduction but there are different uh, yeah, approaches mm -hmm. and uh, these kind yeah, of approaches like are not outside. quite so outside. long in the implantology community you know, it's just some years so mm -hmm. we don't have a lot of literature on that, how good or how bad it works. Sorry, Paul, just one in interruption. We have placed now all the implants. So what I will do now, I will unscrew the guide, or unscrew the, the post again. And then the next step will be that we're going to place the comfort abutments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So everywhere we have achieved uh, a nice primary stability even though this is a uh, post extraction. Are you ready for the countdown, uh, Paul? You have to make race after. <laughs> Maybe we can place don't only... Worry, we are used to that because the prostate is always the last one and so we mostly <laughs> don't have a lot of time. No, the don't dental worry. technician is the last one. Did you, you don't... He's the first one and the last one, right? <laughs> but um, I want to say to the audience, um, if somebody is not familiar with the cam lock system, the COM4 abutment is an abutment which is lifting from the implant level to the abutment level. That means you have this tube in tube system and then you put in this COM4 abutment and then you end up with an abutment play, uh, platform which is nicely designed uh, for what? screwing on top the bridge. Um, and I think this is uh, similar, like other implant systems, call it multi-unit or others. Uh, it's the same approach. Mm -hmm. So we went from the implant level to so the abutment level with this kind of uh, abutment. So then we go from 1.6 to 1.6. Yeah. The outbound, yeah. So now uh, all the implants are placed. We can see that we have some missing bone in that area. I can show you also how much bone we collected. So this is all a tartanous bone here. Wow. Yeah. This is all we collected. No, mm -hmm. Nothing That's artificial, just so during much the drilling there. procedure. And this is very nice. This is we're going to place a deck right. shower by MIS. Okay, so give time to Paul to place some. I have another. I, I have another, another four uh, slides to show. Yeah, yeah, can. So perhaps, uh, perhaps we can show that Michael plays one or two of this comfort 
abutments. Yeah. And then you can show your slides. Okay, I, I think I start or do some in the, uh, was haben wir in the front and so eins eins. So here is uh, basically the comfort abutment. We have a screwdriver. Is it possible to have ten minutes more or no? Which is stabilizing it so that it can, Five, cannot ten. fall down. Yeah. And now the idea so we yeah. do suck it one more yeah, time yeah. and make sure that there's nothing in the interface and then we screw everything into the implant. So we feel there is a certain stop and this tells us that there's nothing in between there. So we could give some Newton centimeters on there. So now uh, you mm -hmm. can show your slides. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, okay. But we come back in about three, four minutes. We come back. Okay. So we are back to the things they have right now, so that we understand exactly what they are doing. You see the camp for abutments, you see the provisionals, and so that's the work what they are doing right now. And uh, then yesterday we had a meeting and talking about the surgery, and we we stuck together with with Paul and everybody to exactly to understand what can happen. And in the end, there were a lot of things who could happen. But I think they did a very, very good job, and it works very well. And uh, what I told you before, we keep time for doing that. Go, it's not a race, and he will do everything perfectly. We have in our boxes, in our lab, we send out one case completely with everything inside. So in the end, the surgeon has only to work, and before he has to connect with us to place the implants in the right positions, because we don't um, know exactly where they have to be. We are not doctors, so in the end, we're preparing the case only uh, for you. So, uh, that was a discussion with everything on the table, and there was a lot of things to see and to think about. And what I talked before, my good friend uh, Scott Gans, uh, probably he is in the US right now online and looking at our surgery, and I think that uh, the brain-guided concept <laughs> in being guided in plantology is the thing what we do today. So you see how many people, Draghi, she was amazing organizing everything. Paul helps us, Federico with all the stuff, his informatic stuff. And to have the surgery room from uh, Professor Sada is extremely good and nice to have with a lot of place. So what we have, the other two patients for tomorrow, this will be tomorrow. Similar Not situation, you see it in Mojo. And um, then we have a nice other one that we see old, the old lady, and there is the same big thing to do. And we have also the face scan, everything, the project in the software. And this is something really exciting what we have to do. And uh, I'd help from, from Magdalena, she helps me too because she's working with Mojo right now. And uh, so this is also amazing to have these cases in the next future to see for you. And of course, we are in the D steps, the fourth as a surgery. And now we go back to the surgery. You see also this abutment, which is a little bit making uh, the socket entrance from the uh, extraction socket a ceiling, yeah? And this ceiling is perfectly for the primary healing. And this was also in this digital workflow done by Uli. Mm -hmm. that, uh, we don't so place now the round the abutments, mm -hmm. which coming from and the company. We customize it a little bit, that what would the be? socket what, were what closed, what you see. Probably with the new Galloway, okay. you can do it by the Galloway, you can build them. Okay. It's very nice. Yeah. So, and um, after we place the second uh, two, so we have four, then we make a try-in of the bridge. There's a question for uh, Uli, a quick one. Um, yeah. Can you handle it? Okay, so, please. will you do this case with white and pink porcelain, uh, rot weiss aesthetic? Yeah, you can do it, but it's not this case. We don't need it because he don't lose the gum. Okay. So, it will be a very nice frame. Okay. You will see it right now. And it depends on the cases. The old lady, probably, she needs a red gum. So, okay. you have each case, and that's nice. You can plan everything before, and you know what you have and what you need. But in this case, no. No. Mm -hmm. 
He's young. He's young. Cool. Yeah, it's okay. But is that RTKE? And also, if and you do it post extractive, it's not okay, going down. You know, you have in the end a very yeah, uh, stable situation. Kurz einmal durchatmen, schmal einmal zu. Können wir vielleicht ein bisschen hochfahren, dann drückt das auch nicht ihm so in den Rücken alles. And there was another question more to us, not you guys. So will this be recorded so that we can see that again later? Yes, as I mentioned this morning, all what we're doing here is recorded, and the access is via your ticket and your access code four weeks after the event. So you have four weeks time to watch everything again and see it. But I'm pretty sure that we will publish together with, um, with Uli yeah. and the clinic and also find a way to publish the other, the other um, cases. And Uli mentioned we'll do tomorrow, so you guys will do tomorrow the cases. We're nothing yeah. to do with it, just to I, avoid misunderstanding. So there's no live surgery anymore tomorrow. Not, not live. <laughs> but they will do that. Yeah, they will finish them. And, and we'll we will arrange it also. We yes. make photos and pictures and everything. So the documentation will be complete. And as you already said, yes. maybe just to use this uh, 30 seconds, you already appreciated what Camlock did. Once again, from our side, thanks a lot to Camlock who supported us in this and others like also Mochra and whoever was involved, but especially Camlock for, you know, making sure that all the implants are available, that the patients can be treated. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. That's a real yeah, partnership. That's amazing. Fantastic. All the team working in uh, university, also Mojo, yeah. sent a device to so the University of Frankfurt to have it okay, there. Uh, that yeah. was very nice. And then sent also Wazim so to, to help us. We have the extraction of the two third molars now. And now we make the insertion, which is a very exciting moment, from this uh -oh. bridge. Uh oh. There is also <laughs> a pleddle to, to fix it very well. Okay. So we can see now there's a little bit of irritation, but we can get it down. Mm -hmm. It has so to be like a zoom out. perfect place. Aber so can you see that basically the, the important thing is now? So we have some some range here, obviously, that uh, Paul can glue the bridge in the right position. So maybe here, there's a little bit of tension, and Uli did made something really nice that we can fix the thing on the pallet. So we have a clear position from the area there. And yeah, I think because you have we have between the abutment and uh, between uh, well, this bridge, which was prefabricated, a so-called clearance fit, a gap. And uh, if this uh, has a, some tension, we widen up the gap a little bit that we have really a passive fit. And then uh, we can now glue this uh, bridge. We enter orally with these abutments, and that's it. Yeah? Yeah. Then, and of course, we place also the other four abutments, which are now missing because he had eight implants. But with these four, if it's now working with these four, which has the biggest distance, it works with all eight, mm -hmm. two. And therefore, we make the first try in if we, everything works mm -hmm. finally. And we are very happy because the bridge is in, it Kay. fits, mm -hmm. and uh, we Kay. only have to add then the four uh, cam floor abutments and the four um, um, abutments for gluing. Paul, Paul, can we see it in the front yes. area? Is it possible to see it from the front area yeah, with Mr. the Hash camera? Either how it closed on the, on the gum. Okay, we, we, uh, we move the patient yep. a little bit. I don't know if you can move him, but... To see how it started, because there was and a the question about the gum. Now try to, to yeah. bring it. it. But the patient, I think he cannot smile, he's a little bit exhausted. No. <laughs> he did a perfect job. He did a Come perfect on. job, yeah. Spiegel drauf von da. <laughs> Perhaps we can transmit, yeah. yeah. The technician has to uh, define so it afterwards. Wow. It's... Um, Perfect. Yeah. Uh, to see how it... Uh, okay, there are the, the holes from the canines. They have to clo be closed. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And it's... Perfect. It has to be stable so because it's only... Here. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. And, and you can see also here the abutments, maybe that they're fitting or closing quite nicely the sockets. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Thank, thanks my team and everything. And yeah. we will continue and uh, let you know the result tomorrow. Okay. Wow, so thanks a lot to everybody. A big applause, please, for, especially for Bravo. Patrick and the whole team.
Wonderful. Thank great you. job. Great, great. We do our best. Wow. And Michael is the uh, lead of all. Yeah. Now, Paul, now the difficult comes for you. This is yeah, now just my job is coming. Yes, okay, thanks a lot. Of course. Thanks, thanks, course. Course. thanks, 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 yeah. Yeah. thanks Thank everybody. Yeah. Great team. That's so the team. Wow. So, Patrick, we machen. Um, yeah, we Let's go back to Uli now. Yeah, screen. we go to to say bye because we have Patrick here. Hopefully tomorrow we'll be happy or this evening. But I, mean, I think he will be happy because we did sure. amazing job and I see all the people working with us behind and uh, that's uh, very, very cool. And, and we all, also Patrick probably, say thank you. And uh, it was nice to be here and to have the first important Congress in Germany in the dental in Europe. world, in Europe. Wow, <laughs> thanks a lot. So we have here the, whole, the entire team. And uh, you saw all of you, you saw Dr. Bertolt yesterday, only with a mask. So you might not recognize it, but now it's here, he's here. Thanks, and it was a great session, wasn't it? It was beautiful. And uh, also thanks to the whole team and to this brave patient. He was doing this all in one day, upper and lower jaw, full arch reconstruction. And I, I think, first of all, big applause for Patrick. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. It was amazing. Yeah. And uh, I think the result in the end showed that uh, all the time we spent in the planning on all the tools we used finally paid out and that everything matched. So yeah. I, I was very happy. So um, here basically you can see the, the fit of the final prosthesis, or not the final one, but the temporary. And I think uh, the important part is uh, how we paid attention also for the uh, already forming the emergence profile with these in, in individual abutments only created. And also there we can see uh, on the post-op X-ray that all implants are nicely in place and uh, all together this is what comes out if you use the tools in the right way and have the team with all the expertise from every field. Thank you one Perfect. more time. Perfect. Thanks again.